Hello, history scholars. This is a lecture about Galileo and the scientific revolution. During the 17th century, many European scholars, including Galileo, were trying to understand the natural world better. Okay? And they were trying to find out more and more about the natural world using science, okay? much to the Catholic Church's chagrin. They were not happy about it, you guys. But Galileo was one of these first scientists. And because of some of his findings and his contributions to science, he is known even today as the father of scientific reason. So let's get into this a little bit more. All right, back in the 17th century, there were a couple of conflicting ideas about what our solar system looked like and how it worked. So you see two different diagrams here. There's the geocentric diagram and the heliocentric diagram. So let's first of all talk about the geocentric. So the geocentric um, model of the solar system puts the Earth at the very, very center of the solar system. And that according to geocentrism, that everything revolves around the Earth. So planets move around the Earth and the sun moves around the Earth. Okay? And geo, the root word comes from the Greek word for Earth. Contrary to the geocentric model of the solar system is the heliocentric. So on the right hand side, that is the model of it. And the heliocentric model puts the sun at the very center of the solar system. And today we know that this is the accurate one. This is the accurate um, version of the solar system. So the heliocentric puts the sun at the center, the, the including the earth, the planets and the earth revolve around the sun. And helio comes from the Greek word for sun. Um, really important to understand, you guys, is that in the 17th century, especially in Italy, where um, Galileo was from, people didn't know that the, the solar system was but a tiny, tiny piece of a much larger galaxy and universe. They just didn't know that stuff at that point. But um, in Galileo's time and place, nearly everybody believed that the Earth was the center of the universe. And um, even smart people, you guys believe that it was the center of the universe because they couldn't feel the earth move. And so that was their rationale that they couldn't feel the earth move. So the planets must be revolving around um, the earth itself. So this caused a problem. Okay. We, we have two different beliefs between the scientific um, community and the spiritual or religious community. Okay. The Catholic church was listening to what the scientists were saying and basically they were accusing them of heresy. So um, this, this passage from Joshua 10, 12 through 13 from the Bible itself um, is what a lot of the religious scholars were going to saying, no, you cannot teach that um, the sun is the center of the solar system. So let's read this together. The problem. On the day the Lord gave the Amorites over to Israel, Joshua said to the Lord in the presence of Israel, Son, stand still over Gibeon and, and you moon over the valley of Ajalon. So the sun stood still and the moon stopped till the nation avenged itself on its enemies as it is written in the book of Jassar. All right, you guys. So that specifically comes from the Bible. And of course, the religious community is going to point to these sayings and say, sun stands still over Gibeon and you moon over the valley of Ajalon. So the sun stood still and the moon stopped. Okay. And, and basically that the earth was the center of the universe. All right. So we need to talk about this man, Nicholas Copernicus. He was, um, he was a, he was a medieval scientist um, and he challenged the geocentric idea. And he did believe that the sun was the center of the universe, and he knew how radical his theory was. And so he wrote a book about it, but he did not publish it until his death because he knew that the church would be after him. But he started the ball rolling, and a lot of the scientists that came after him referred back to his work about the heliocentric model. All right. Um, the Council of Trent. We have to talk about this, you guys. So the Catholic Church convened um, at the Can Council of Trent, a place um, in 1545 to stop the spread of Protestantism and to revive the Catholic Church. So thinking back to some of my previous lessons about Martin Luther and the Protestant Reformation, 
a lot was going on in the Catholic Church. There were a lot of people standing up to it and saying, you know, indulgences are not ethical. Um, they're not biblical. You get rid of them. And Martin Luther himself, just a handful of years before, had uh, written out 95 complaints and he posted it for the, all the world to see. And so the Catholic Church was dealing with a lot of backlash from people um, within the Catholic Church and also outside of the Catholic Church, so namely scientists. So at the Council of Trent, um, they basically got together and talked about what they should do. So this council decided that the Catholic Church should interpret the Bible, um, literally, and established um, the holy office of the Roman Inquisition. <laughs> you guys, the Roman Inquisition was no joke. Um, so the Roman Inquisition was basically a group of people that worked within the church who wanted to combat heresy. And remember that a heretic or somebody that commits heresy is someone whose beliefs go against the church's official beliefs, which is a big no-no at this time. And so this group of people uh, involved in the Inquisition would use torture and violence in order to elicit confessions from heretics. And then they would punish them, all right, for going against the church's word, basically. Um, so this was a huge, huge, huge problem for scientists because who's going to risk their lives, right? I mean, they did, but it was really, really scary to come out against the church. And here's one guy who did come out against the church. His name was um, Giordano Bruno. Um, Giordano Bruno was a scientist who supported the heliocentric model. He believed that the sun was the center of the universe. He also theorized that the sun um, is just one of the moving stars and that the universe contained many, many planets orbiting other stars. So in 1600, he was tried before the Inquisition. They caught him. They put him on trial. And unfortunately, this poor young man was burned at the stake. I don't know about you guys, but I definitely cannot think of a more painful way. To, well, there's probably a lot of painful ways to go, but being burned alive can't be fun. Um, we actually, in history, we don't know the exact charges he was found guilty of. And in addition to his astronomical theories, um, he also held many religious beliefs that were contrary to the church. So the church obviously was not a fan of this man. All right, this leads us to Galileo. Galileo was a very religious man, and at one point in his life, he actually wanted to be a monk. But he was born in Italy in the city of Pisa in 1564, and he ended up going to the University of Pisa, and he studied motion and physics. So the more and more he studied when he was at university, he started to really believe that the heliocentric theory was correct, that the sun was the center of the solar system. Um, in 1609, he built a telescope and his observations that he could make using the telescope really did convince him that Copernicus and Copernicus's um, heliocentric model was actually correct and the geocentric was not. And so Galileo then began teaching the model, this model to his students, which created some conflict. So in 1615, the church warned Galileo to actually stop teaching the heliocentric model. And just a year later in 1616, the church banned the works of Copernicus. You know, because Copernicus, remember, he published um, after his death that book. And so the church wanted none of it. And um, they also banned others, other pieces of, of writing that supported heliocentrism. So Galileo then continued to write and publish ideas about his theory, regardless of what the church wanted. And then the Pope, Pope Urban VIII, um, told Galileo that he could discuss Copernicus's theory, but he could not say that it was absolutely true. So the church kind of tried to work with um, Galileo at this point in time. So um, his, his 1632 book, The Dialogue Concerning the Two Chief World Systems, that's the title of it, it's kind of a long title, um, came too close to arguing the theory was true though. So uh, Galileo just walked a fine line with the church. And so this book that he published, it just didn't satisfy the church. So he was brought before the Inquisition. So they got Galileo, they brought him before the um, Inquisition, this panel of people, they put him on trial and they tried him as a heretic. 